Hi, I'm Ms. Rebecca. In this gallery of language arts, we're going to pretend that we're traveling through the American wilderness to see what we can find. We're going to think like artists and writers and document real details that they see. That is expository writing and art, and it describes, provides information, or documents real things. And so we are going to find that in the art in this gallery. Come with me. So I'm going to look at this painting right here, and I'm going to ask you to think about a couple of questions before we start looking. Why do we document? Is that important? I think so. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. And do you think things change over time? You're changing over time. Let's see how this painting changed. So we're going to look at this painting using sensory language to describe what we sense. And let's remember what our five senses are. We can see, smell, taste, hear, and touch. And so let's imagine that we have joined the group of people that are off in the distance in this painting. It looks like a family. So let's stand beside them and imagine what we would sense as we look at this. So I think we're all looking at the same thing. We're seeing a geyser getting shot up into the, uh, into the air. And we're also probably going to hear that sound of the pressure of the water shooting up. And then I think when you have that kind of activity underground, you're going to smell things like sulfur. So I suspect these people smell things that they don't normally smell. I also think that this water up in the air is creating humidity that you might be able to taste. And I think if they reach down, the ground they're standing on is going to feel very sandy and gritty in their hands. So I want to tell you a little bit more about this painting and who painted it. So we're looking at a place that you can go and visit today. It's, and this place is in Yellowstone National Park. And this is Old Faithful Geyser. So the artist, Grafton Tyler Brown, entitled this painting, Old Faithful Geyser, Yellowstone National Park. And Grafton Tyler Brown is a really interesting artist because he was the first African-American artist ever to document the American West. And he traveled to Yellowstone several times. But let me tell you why he was the perfect person to do this expository art. He worked as a lithographer and he documented mining towns and he created maps. So maps, details are the important thing, right? So he was really good at taking down those facts and putting them in his art. And so he was a very successful lithographer, eventually owned his own firm, and then moved to easel painting. And that's what took him to Yellowstone to paint these beautiful landscapes. So he was painting exactly what he saw. We can feel very confident that what he's created for us is what was there. And remember how we talked about it's important to document and that things change over time? Well, one of the things he documents in his painting, there's a building way back in the distance behind some trees, and that's the Shack Hotel. And the Shack Hotel was a place that housed tourists that came to Yellowstone, but it was only there for 10 years. If you go to Yellowstone today, you can't stay in a hotel within walking distance of Yellowstone, uh, of Old Faithful. Um, so he's showing us something that existed at one point and no longer does. So it's really a great history document. So I think that as we've discussed this painting, we probably, if we had to decide if, if this is a fictional painting or a nonfiction painting, we would describe this as a nonfiction painting. Let's move and look at another landscape, and I'm going to tell you why I think this one could be described as fiction. All right, we're going to look at the largest framed painting in our collection. And this painting is by Albert Bierstadt. And remember I told you that we were going to discuss whether this painting was fact or fiction? It's a landscape. It looks very factual, right? Well, we are going to tell you about how Albert Bierstadt created this. So he's at an actual place, Yosemite Valley, and he left to travel out to the Rocky Mountains and to the West to paint these beautiful landscapes. But the thing that Albert Bierstadt did that was different from Grafton Tyler Brown is he wanted to really create a sense of drama and excitement in his paintings. And so if you went to Yosemite, you would see 
places that look like this. But you wouldn't see all these places in one painting. So basically what he did was he took the best of one place and the best of another place and he put them together and he's creating the ideal landscape. So I think we could describe this painting technically as a work of fiction because you're never going to be able to stand down by these deer and see this vista. Okay, so we have learned a lot about using our senses to describe things. So with this painting, I thought we'd write an acrostic poem. And so an acrostic poem is a poem in which each first letter of a line spells out a word. And the word we are going to write our acrostic poem based on is Yosemite, because that's this place and the name of this painting. So let's think about sensory words. Remember, it's see, smell, hear, taste, and touch. And we're going to think about our senses as we look through this painting and come up with words that describe what we see that match the word we're looking for. So the first word we're going to be looking at letter is going to be a Y. And my eye is drawn to the yellow field of flowers. So maybe yellow flowers. And then O. Well, I can't, I can't ignore the ominous clouds. The whole sky is filled with clouds and ominous starts with O. S. Let's see. I see swaying trees. If you look at these trees very closely, you can feel the wind. Those trees are being bent by something we can't see. So there is wind blowing through this valley. E. Well, I get a sense of earthly terrain. Do you see the terrain is sloping? I see a lot of earth. M. Well, of course, we have these mighty mountains, right? I. Let's see something. Ooh, I see indigo skies. Indigo is a fancy word for blue, but we definitely see a deep, deep indigo blue up in that sky. T. Well, I see trees, and I see in many different colors. So maybe we can say trees in fall. And then E again. So we have to think of a whole other E word. Well, again, I see evergreen trees. So some of these trees are going to lose their leaves because it's fall. But some of these trees are going to be green all year long. So you've walked with me through sensory words, but now I want you to do it on your own. Remember, those sensory words are gonna describe this painting. And I want you on the cover of your booklet to write down a word bank. So look at the picture, think of your senses, and write down words that match Yosemite that will describe this painting. And then once you have a nice collection of words, you're going to find your acrostic poem page and you're going to pick out your favorite word for Y and O and S and on. And you're going to write your own acrostic poem. And then I would like you to either read it to your teacher or read it to a classmate. But I would really, really love it if you took a picture and sent it to us so we could read it too. I'm so glad you could join me today to talk about sensory language and a couple of the paintings here in this gallery. And I hope you'll join us in our next gallery to talk about elements of a story in art.